Hello everyone and welcome back to part 5 of uh, AWS scenario based uh, questions. Now if you are uh, preparing for AWS interview or if you just want to enhance your knowledge on uh, with, with some of your AWS scenario based questions then uh, you are in the right place. Now in this session we will uh, look at some more uh, interesting questions that you can expect as part of your um, AWS scenario based and I will also look at uh, the answers for uh, these questions. Um, once again before we start off with the session please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So let's get started with this. So the first question that we have is your organization has a hybrid cloud setup with on-premise servers and AWS resources. So basically, you have your on-premise data center as well as your AWS data center. Now, how can you establish a secure and private connection between them? So basically, we have to create a connectivity between your on-premise data center and then the AWS data center. So how can we do that? Now, for this, we have this service called AWS Direct Connect that we can use to establish a dedicated network between your on-premise data center and the resources that we have in AWS. So this will this service will help you to establish the connectivity so that you can start accessing the resources that you have in AWS from your on-premise uh, data center. Now this will ensure that you have a secure communication and also a private communication between these two data centers. So whenever we talk about establishing a connectivity between your on-premise data center and the AWS data center, we can make use of your AWS Direct Connect. The next question we have is, your team is adopting infrastructure as code practices. So basically setting up your infrastructure using code. Now, what service uh, we can use in AWS to automate this infrastructure provisioning and management by making use of your code. Now, in AWS, whenever we talk about uh, setting up your infrastructure use, using code, we have this service called AWS CloudFormation. So CloudFormation is your infrastructure as code service in AWS and this helps you to define your infrastructure as a code so you can you can write code in the json templates or in the yaml templates and you can start provisioning the infrastructure by making use of your code so with this we make use of your templates templates is nothing but your script the blueprint that we write uh, to set up your infrastructure so whatever the code we write for example launching an ec2 instance or creating an s3 bucket we call that as your template now this will enable you to automate the provisioning and management of your aws resources so uh, if you want to like you know launch an instance you just run and go and run that code and whenever we run that code the infrastructure will be provisioned and then it also becomes easier to manage this infrastructure by making use of your aws cloud formation the next question we have is explain the concept of VPC in AWS. So VPC, it stands for Virtual Private Cloud. And this is one of the very important service that we have in AWS. So without a VPC, we cannot work with most of the services like your RDS, your EC2, uh, Lambda. So most of the services is network bound. So VPC plays a very important role when we talk about the infrastructure on AWS. So this is a logically isolated network resource that we have in the AWS cloud. And then we can use this to launch our AWS resources. So be it a EC2 instance, be it a RDS instance, we make use of your VPC to create an isolated section in the AWS cloud. So by making use of this VPC, you have the um, benefit of customizing your network topology. So you can configure your subnets, how many subnets you want, your route tables. You can control your access by making use of your security groups, uh, NACLs, network ACL. So you have the option of customizing your network the way you want it. So you want like two subnets or three subnets in different, different availability zones, your routing from where the traffic should, um, let's say your traffic is coming from the internet gateway to which subnet it should go, uh, what traffic you want to allow, what traffic you don't want to allow, all that can be controlled by making use of your VPC. The next question we have is, your company is migrating a legacy application to AWS. Now, which service in AWS can help you automate and coordinate the steps 
in this migration so basically you want to have a, a centralized view of your migration process um, you want to coordinate the different different steps you have in your migration now for this again we have the service called aws migration hub that we can make use of uh, to uh, automate your migration process and see the steps that you have in your migration process now this provides us with a centralized hub so you know you can have all it's a it's all in one place uh, service and this helps with tracking the process of your migration uh, for different different projects and also it helps you to integrate with various tools and different different services so it could be your database migration it could be your application migration or it could be a server migration everything will be centralized in one service which is your aws migration service the next question we have is you want to deploy a highly available web application across multiple aws regions now which service can help you with this so you have an application you want to make it highly available and deploy this across multiple availability so, uh, region sorry so again for this we can make use of your global accelerator which helps you to deploy your application across multiple regions so uh, this helps you to improve the performance of your application and also the availability of your application now this also helps you to automate your failover of your application and also the low latency routing so the global accelerator under this what happens is your network traffic will utilize the aws network for the routing unlike if you're not using aws global accelerator what happens is whenever i'm trying to access an application my traffic goes over the internet uh, which is outside AWS network and then access the application which can increase the latency it's basically the hops that is happening with your networks now with your global accelerator my traffic will always go to the AWS endpoints which is within the AWS network so I'll have lesser hops and that will help me improve the latency of my application so we can make use of this global accelerator for that the next question we have is uh, you want to ensure that your S3 objects are accessible only via a specific CloudFront distribution. How can you configure this? So S3 is on one service and then CloudFront is another service. Now, by default, you can access your data from the S3 buckets as well. You have a URL associated with that. But now you want to restrict to that so that your users can access the data only from the CloudFront distribution. How can you do that? Now, for this one option we have is we can implement your s3 bucket policies that allows access only when the request comes through your aws cloudfront distribution and this will ensure your content is delivered securely you also have the option of restricting the access from the aws cloudfront when you're uh, setting up your cloudfront distribution you can restrict it over there saying that the access can be allowed only from the CloudFront distribution and uh, anyone trying to access the data from the S3 bucket URL, it should not work. So basically you will have to put in that restriction during the setup and that will make sure your data is secured and it is accessible only from the CloudFront distribution URL. The next question we have is your application needs to process real time streaming data from various sources. Uh, what AWS service can help you with stream processing now in AWS whenever we talk about uh, processing real-time streaming data we have this service called AWS Kinesis Amazon Kinesis that's your streaming service which helps you to process and analyze real-time data so as and when your data is coming in you can start processing it you can start analyzing this real-time streaming data and this will help you with your scalability and the durability of your data maybe you want to uh, run some reports or generate some reports based on the real-time data that is being generated you can make use of your amazon kinesis service for that the next question we have is your organization needs to analyze large data sets and run complex queries uh, with service in aws you can use for big data processing 
so uh, you know like you're dealing with huge amount of data and then now you want to start processing this data by running complex queries and start generating reports out of this data so what service can we use for that now for this we have this service called amazon emr which is our elastic map produce so we can make use of this to manage your big data platform all right so any amount of data you have you can start managing that and this allows you to process and analyze huge amount of data so any amount of data you have you can start processing that you can start analyzing that and this follows your popular frameworks like your hadoop applications your spark application so it follows the same framework so you can start processing large amount of data sets and you can start analyzing these data sets to generate your various type of reports that you need the next question we have is you want to automate the deployment and scaling of containerized applications which service can you use in aws so in aws whenever we talk about running your containerized applications we have two main services we have the amazon ecs which is your elastic container service and then you have the amazon eks which is your elastic kubernetes service so elastic kubernetes service is an aws managed service and this helps you to deploy your containerized applications on your aws platform so using this service you can deploy your applications in the form of containers and then you can start managing these containers by making use of this service and this is a fully managed service for by aws so you just start like following the ui you can set up the cluster and then you can start deploying your containers on this clusters by making use of your eks service now the next question we have is your company is concerned about the compliance and the auditability of your account now how can your iam service help you with these concerns so basically you know um, there's some concern around the compliance and also the auditing of your aws account so how can we utilize this iam service to overcome these concerns now iam whenever we talk about your iam so as the name suggests it's your identity and access management so we can use this to implement your strict access controls so you know as to who can access what uh, which services they can access which resources they can access we can control that we can also use this to audit your user activity uh, we can use this to generate various access reports and compliance and audit requirements as well so basically everything from the user's perspective we can um, control that by making use of your aws iam service right so that's about your part five and uh, again we have completed some very interesting uh, scenario based questions that's all for this session thank you once again before you leave please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and if you like the video Leave a like and please share the video.